Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Selim Binay. I'm a research scientist at Berkeley and Peer. So uh, I'll be talking about the second project of the collaborative effort between UC San Diego and Berkeley. And uh, basically this project is uh, about performance evaluation of uh, earthquake resilient bridges on a bridge <coughs> system level. And we uh, are using hybrid simulation and uh, performance-based earthquake engineering as our methodologies and tools. So we uh, eventually would like to uh, expand the study that uh, Professor Restrepo talked about to uh, bridge system level evaluation. <laughs> so, hmm? so, where did Gabriel go? <laughs> Oh, I, I, I can't. S with the, with the little yeah, I see it from my uh, oh. here, but I don't see it. Hmm? That's the, that's a Mac thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it changes here, but not here. Is it a oh, okay, okay. Is it a hybrid presentation? Yeah, yeah, that's why it's, it has complications because it's a hybrid simulation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not working. Is it exit and restart? Uh, okay. Oh. Just restart it if it goes. Uh, oh, okay. You are here. So maybe. How to start this thing? I like the presentation. What is the uh, presentation mode on this thing? So, Ian, do you know how to use a mic? Just, just click it twice. Yeah. You should, you should start up. Yeah. That, no, no. On the icon. On the icon. Okay. 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 And then should work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. This is classical part of hybrid simulation. We always have issues. So uh, so I, I would like to continue with why why do we need ha hybrid simulation for this project. Uh, as uh, some, some of us already know, hybrid simulation is a method that combines uh, analytical modeling with uh, physical testing in an efficient and effective way. And basically, uh, a, a structure is divided into several substructures. And some of the substructures are uh, modeled in the computer as analytical substructures, whereas others uh, are physically tested in the lab as experimental substructures. So obviously, the analytical substructures are generally those uh, that uh, can be modeled with confidence. And the experimental substructures are uh, those th that are difficult to model due to various reasons, such as lack of prior data, uh, complicated geometry, uh, highly nonlinear inelastic behavior, and complicated boundary conditions, and so on. And in uh, particular relation to uh, this project with resilient bridge columns, uh, basically uh, there is generally limited data uh, for the new technologies used in these type of resilient bridges. And also, as we can imagine, it is not possible to test a bridge uh, system like, like this one here uh, in any of the labs in the world. So therefore, hybrid simulation actually in that regard provides a really great tool uh, to test these type of structures, mainly because of uh, the, uh, because it allows modeling uh, a uh, big portion of the bridge in the computer, such as the deck, the bridge deck, and the abutments, and only uh, testing uh, those parts that are crit critical to the resilient bridge systems, such as the uh, rocking and self-centering columns that Professor Restrepo mentioned in his presentation. And also, we have seen uh, the necessity for to use hybrid simulation from the recently conducted blind prediction test that also Professor Restrepo mentioned. And here I show uh, uh, the same uh, results in a different format, uh, where I show the coefficient of variation of the predictions of different teams. Uh, and here 
coefficient of variation is shown for the maximum horizontal displacement and for the uh, uh, maximum uh, base shear. And we can see that, as Professor Restrepo showed, we see a large variation, up to 70% of coefficient of variation. Basically, this indicates the lack of uh, accurate modeling for these type of uh, structures, and also it indicates a lack of consistency uh, in modeling these type of uh, structures. So therefore, it highlights the need for hybrid simulation. And um, so as part of the project, basically, we considered two uh, different resilient bridge systems. And the first one is uh, basically an uh, innovative connection device called a V-connector that leads mainly uh, to uh, an isolation layer at the connection between the column and the bridge deck uh, and works as a protective system. And the second uh, resilient system is uh, this uh, system with self-centering and rocking, uh, uh, rocking columns that uh, Professor Restrepo talked about. So uh, in the coming slides, I'll talk about the hybrid simulations of these two systems. And I'll start with the first one, the uh, uh, one with the V connector. So what is a V connector? Uh, basically, this is uh, a connecting uh, device designed as the joint between the column and the superstructure or between the uh, column and footing in a bridge. And basically, it comp uh, consists of these uh, components here. So uh, actually, uh, there is a uh, this thing called the V, v tube, that, that's a cone, that gets embedded to, let's say, the bottom part, let's say the column, and then the elastic, an elastic rod gets placed in, in the cone, and uh, gets uh, this one, the elastic uh, rod is connected to the uh, cap beam or the bridge deck uh, through a, a pin connection, and uh, uh, actually, this rod it has a generally a, a small cross section, therefore it's uh, flexible. And because of the flexibility of this rod, we end up having an isolation layer actually here between the uh, cap beam and the column. And uh, uh, therefore, due to this isola isolation layer, the period is elongated and also uh, the forces uh, transferred to the column uh, is limited. And accordingly, uh, the system el uh, ensures elastic response of bridge components, including the columns. And also, there is a little bit of energy dissipation uh, due to friction that is between this uh, uh, pad here uh, and the, and the, or, or the washers and the top pad here. So this uh, also uh, provides some sort of uh, energy dissipation plus uh, isolation. And this system is uh, useful for uh, accelerated bridge construction by mainly allowing pre prefabrication of the various structural components and assembling them later on. So uh, as I mentioned, our objective is to conduct a, uh, evaluation at a bridge level. So we need to uh, find a bridge uh, to do the hybrid simulation as a prototype bridge and we basically used this bridge from Northern California and actually this bridge uh, has a, uh, only a single column bridge band so therefore it is suitable mainly for the purpose of hybrid simulation because we can um, model the, uh, uh, we can simulate the V connector as an experimental substructure and we can model the uh, rest of the bridge uh, is an analytical substructure uh, in the computer. And uh, b uh, these are the hybrid simulation details. So as I mentioned, we model all components of the bridge, including the column, the deck, and the uh, abutment springs in the computer. And we are only testing the V-connector as an experimental substructure in the lab using this uh, test setup that you see here. Basically, we have two rigid blocks in the setup, uh, and the V connector is uh, in between them. And these two rigid blocks are used to apply the lateral displacements that are computed from the hybrid simulation uh, to the V connector. Uh, and uh, one thing to mention is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, the design is uh, done so that the 
all the bridge components uh, will remain elastic, but we want to make sure if this is really the case. Therefore, we modeled the column inelastic behavior just to see that uh, if it really stays in the elastic range or if it goes uh, be beyond the elastic range and goes into the uh, inelastic response. And a little bit of the hybrid simulation detail. We use this undocumented uh, alpha operator splitting, undocumented in open seas. That's why I call it undocumented. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, and uh, the reason that we use this is because it's a, a sort of an explicit method that does a prediction and a correction, and therefore it eliminates uh, iterations which are not really desirable in hybrid simulation. And also we are uh, conducting the test on a, or we are conducting the simulation on a full scale uh, bridge level. However, due to lab constraints, we uh, needed to scale down the specimen, the V connector using a scale factor of three. So therefore, in order to conduct the uh, simulation on a full scale, what we have done is we, uh, we scaled down the computer displacements uh, by the scale factor be before it gets applied to the specimen. And uh, after application of the displacements, uh, the forces that are measured are multiplied back, uh, multiplied by S square due to the similitude relations before getting used back in the numerical integration algorithm. Mm. Oh yeah, we are having another problem because I'm talking about hybrid simulation details. Oops. I don't know, it's just frozen. I don't. <laughs> the computer froze. The computer froze. It couldn't stand the presentation. <laughs> yes. Why is it Oh, okay. Do you want to wait? Oh, qu quit, quit. Yeah, it's everything froze. It's not working. Let's restart the computer. No, that's not That it, it already exists. It's uh, designed by an engineer in SoCal. Okay. So that's kind of his product. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it already existed. Yes. Yes. I think three times period elongation can be three times, yeah, Th three times of elongation, like three times. So, but just to get the numbers, actually, we have done some. Uh, we have done the hybrid simulation plus some analysis without the V connector, and I can ask our student for the exact numbers. So I, I will show the results in terms of moment curvature, but I, I remember the period with the V connector is 1.5 seconds, something like that. And the other one is much smaller, so that's why I told three, but just to confirm, I'll, I'll ask the, the yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, he's restarting the. Any other questions? Uh, we can probably have some discussion. Sure. You. you it's gonna take a while. Oh, oh, no, actually, it it just came. You know, there? Almost. There. So can we? No. no. You have something there? Video or something like that? No, I don't. <laughs> That's so the next one is causing the problem. So can we delete this? I showed it already. Sorry, I have a troublemaker slide, it looks like. I don't know why, you but... That slide and after the next one. Yeah, but we couldn't do that for some reason. Let's it in. So, uh, yeah, maybe you can go, go ahead with your question. Hey, are there any other questions while we... I have another one about the connector. So you have the inelastic rod. Um, elastic rod. It's elastic? Yeah, There's it's... some inelastic portion, right? That, that's the friction. Uh, I mean, it's not... Uh, it's a combina co basically a combination of friction plus elastic response of the rod. Uh, okay. So that, uh, yeah. And the, and the rod is pretty flexible, so that's the isolation, and the friction is the energy dissipation. Okay. So that's a combination of uh, isolation plus energy dissipation. It's basically a sliding interface, and then the rod is what centers it? The rod is the el uh, elastic part, that, that basically is the low stiffness portion mm -hmm. that forms the uh, and and it recenters because it's supposed to remain elastic, yeah. But sometimes because of the friction, if it gets stick, it, it stuck at some location, it may not recenter. So that's something that needs to be improved actually about the system. What the recentering, the, the displacement. It was like this full scale. It was twelve inches. The yeah. Plus or minus four with the scale. Though. Yes, Pl plus minus, yeah, plus minus minus twelve. No, no, the times three. So yeah, plus or minus four reduces scale. Yeah, so twelve. Yeah. No? No, don't go back. Okay, don't don't go back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the next slide. Yeah. So. I oh actually I had the hybrid simulation results but I think that slide was okay actually can I can I do yeah yeah I think this is good okay so uh, so the hybrid simulation results uh, I'll just show two plots one is the force displacement relation of uh, this uh, V connector itself and you see here uh, the uh, actually pretty stable uh, behavior and we uh, the res behavior is as expected because it consists of this friction response here plus the elastic response of the rod that, that is in this part so it's a combination of friction plus the uh, rod response which is elastic so basically to check if we really have a, a elastic uh, components uh, in terms of uh, the bridge components remain elastic we check the moment curvature uh yeah something okay uh so uh we check the moment curvature relationship at the uh, section at the bottom of the column and we i think this is what's causing all the confusion <laughs> And uh, we have uh, observed that, uh, okay, I have another laser pointer. Yeah, so 
I have a much, much stronger laser point. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so okay, uh, yeah. So we basically uh, uh, have uh, we we check the moment curvature at the bottom of the c column at a section, and what we have seen from the uh, hybrid simulation is that the moment curvature response is mainly elastic, and. Uh, uh, I think your, your, your laser was too strong. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Do you have a laptop? I have, yes. That's why I always use my own laptop. I can, I can, can I, can I connect my... <laughs> Too much trouble. What did you do? I don't know, it was just working fine, yeah. But I see here. This is Actually, yeah, halfway through. Let me be really quick after this. Let me delete this one. Oh, I have a. I have the uh, adapter. I have the adapter. No, I have my strong, s s I have my strong laser pointer. I'll just stick to the stronger one. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, then I'll just go with this one. So, uh, so, so af after seeing this uh, elastic response, we basically wanted to compare with a uh, as-built configuration of this bridge without a V connector. Therefore, we have done another simulation without the V connector. And uh, we compared the moment curvature, as we see here, uh, the, there's quite large inelastic response when we don't have the V connector. So basically this shows that the V connector improves the response of the bridge si significantly. So then I'll move on to the next uh, uh, system, the second system, the one with self-centering and rocking columns. And here, here uh, we have several objectives. The first objective is actually uh, like a fundamental objective, which is to compare the hybrid simulation results with uh, shaking table results. Uh, because this type of an exercise uh, has been done really r rarely in the past, and therefore we don't want to lose this opportunity to basically to be able to make a comparison, because we have identically the same two specimens. And uh, also, 
uh, from this uh, V-connector exercise, we demonstrated the effectiveness of hybrid simulation on evaluating the bridge system level uh, response. So therefore, we would like to complement these uh, shaking table tests that Professor Restrepo mentioned with hybrid simulations conducted on a complete bridge and evaluate the response in that manner. And eventually, we would like to uh, conduct performance-based earthquake and engineering analysis uh, to quantify the performance improvement in terms of uh, losses and downtime and, and so on. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, we'll have two uh, hybrid simulation phases. Uh, and uh, in the first one, we'll basically replicate the shaking table test directly. And uh, only uh, the difference uh, would be basically uh, the uh, masses that are physical in the shaking table would be replaced uh, by an analytical mass that is in the computer. And this would uh, directly result to a one-to-one -one, uh, comparison of shaking table and hybrid simulation tests. And, uh, and the tests will be done uh, across the street in building 484 uh, using this uh, setup here uh, that is shown in a, th a 3D SketchUp plot. And basically, this is our uh, uh, test setup. Uh, this is the reaction wall. And here, uh, there is the specimen with the uh, columns and the footing and the cap beam. And here, uh, basically, we are using only one actuator to apply the lateral displacements because from the uh, shaking table test results, we observed that the moment at the top is really insignificant. Therefore, we don't need to really apply any moments at the top. And we are applying the lateral displacements through a single horizontal actuator. And uh, because there is a vertical component of the ground motion, we need to consider that in hybrid simulation and to be able to consider that we'll apply the vertical displacements uh, due to gravity plus the uh, vertical component of the earthquake with this uh, vertical actuator that is connected uh, to the specimen in between the two columns. And uh, in the second phase, uh, similar to the first exercise, uh, the rest of the bridge will be modeled analytically to consider and evaluate the system level uh, bri bridge response and see how uh, it will work on a system level. And uh, basically, we are planning to do these tests uh, either uh, late September or, or early October. And uh, so here, I would like to quickly mention about a, a little educational activity that we conducted over the summer uh, as part of this project. So as we all know, PEER is a, a research center, but it has a strong commitment to education. So therefore, in this PEER project, we did a little educational activity over the summer and basically the it was centered around specimen construction and we had actually these columns uh, already built uh, by a uh, contractor uh, of the specimen that were basically uh, constructed together with the shaking table test specimen but uh, at the end of the summer we didn't have anything related to the uh, footing or the cap beam therefore uh, during the summer we had uh, Several intern undergraduate and graduate students uh, basically work on these uh, rebar cages for the foundation and the cap beam. And, uh, and this was basically done in an effort to increase the hands-on involvement of students and build some capacity in the lab for uh, similar uh, future construction uh, for other projects in the lab. And also, we just didn't want to have the students to come to the lab and do some uh, labor. So therefore, we somehow Im involved some educational uh, intellectual activity. And we developed a short course for them uh, on hybrid simulation, where we basically taught them the basics of hybrid simulation, several applications and systems, and also a little bit of open, open seas and open fresco. And I, I think that was kind of a fun, uh, useful activity over the summer. And actually, uh, the students uh, were really uh, fast in doing this. They finished all these two cages, which was actually quite complicated, as Professor Restrepo also showed, in, in like a month. So, so that was a quite good achievement. So what are the next steps? Uh, as I mentioned, we'll uh, conduct the two phases of hybrid simulation and then calibrate, it and, uh, calibrate the analytical models according to the test results. 
And eventually, uh, using these calibrated models, we'll conduct a performance-based uh, earthquake engineering analysis on both of the resilient systems. And why, actually, we, we will use uh, PBE? Mainly, it is because uh, it's, uh, it's the PBE methods are probably the best way of doing a, a resiliency evaluation on a system uh, level. So here I'm just showing some um, description of resiliency. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, earthquake resilient structural system has should uh, or ha should have reduced uh, failure probabilities and reduced consequences in terms of economic uh, losses and so on, and also reduced time of recovery. So basically, to compute all these quantities, the time of recovery, the uh, consequences in terms of losses or e even the fa failure probabilities, there are many uncertainties that need to be considered. And uh, the performance-based earthquake engineering methodologies, and uh, particularly the one that has been developed by PEER, uh, are, have uh, robust uh, tools that would consider all these uh, uh, uncertainties uh, in a uh, mathematical way. So, and this is my last slide. I basically want to show uh, an example uh, of an exercise that we conducted. Uh, using PBE on another bridge from Northern California. Uh, here we basically did some PBE analysis on the S-built configuration of this bridge, plus uh, another uh, configuration of this bridge that has been retrofitted uh, with the columns, retrofitted with CFRP, and then we used the triple uh, integral to uh, com uh, compute some uh, probability of bridge closure in 50 years. And we'll do a similar uh, exercise for these resilient bridge systems and compare uh, and make a comparison with as built uh, cases. thinking to add the reconnector there? Phase three. Phase three. <laughs> Phase two is, is, doesn't have any. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the hybrid tests you're doing, they're also done at reduced scale, right? Even for the, for the rocking pump? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. So therefore, we'll do the same thing, uh, reduce the computer displacements and scale them back. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, thank Salim. So